All right, we're doing some things in the room. And we did this trim four years ago when we first moved in. We have a different idea of what we wanna do back here on this wall. So Thomas ripped all the trim off yesterday. He caulked it, so a lot of the sheetrock came up with it. He's gonna mud this whole thing, let it sit overnight. We'll sand it down tomorrow. And then we should be able to start painting first thing tomorrow. All right, so here he is spackling or mudding, whatever you wanna call this. We did about two coats. So after he does this entire thing, he left it overnight and then he mudded again and then sanded it down again before we went ahead and painted the entire wall. While he was doing that, I wanted to get working on the two nightstands next to our bed. I thrifted these over a year ago for $20 and I've already painted them. I don't love the color anymore. So, but before going and getting new dressers, I wanted to just paint them a different color and see if I like them. I'm also going to be adding new hardware. So I'll show you how I do all of that. The first thing I'm going to do is remove all of this hardware. I'm going to be replacing it, but I'm also using a different kind and style of knob. So I won't be needing the four holes where they're located. I'm going to put them in a different spot. So because I'm doing that, I'm gonna show you how I'm going to prep this so the paint goes on really smoothly and we don't have to deal with any of the damage from the old holes. I'm just going to remove all of the hardware and then I'm going to fill it with some spackling. After I do this, I'm gonna show you how this comes into play because this is very important when it comes to painting where you have mudded. This is after my second coat of mud. So what I actually did is I came back here with some tape and I really filled in the holes and kind of pushed the mud down because I was noticing it was like bubbling and it just wasn't doing what I wanted. So anyway, I got it dry. It's been sitting here for a couple of hours, sanded it down and then just did another coat so you can see where it's pink. So anyway, you probably would wanna do that if you are trying to fill in holes or do something similar. Make sure you tape right there first and then completely fill in those holes and then do a second layer if you need to. Once I got this all the way sanded down, I went ahead and sprayed the shellac over the top. Now by doing this, you are going to get an even coat of paint and it really makes the biggest difference. If you're ever going to mud over furniture or fill in holes, I would definitely suggest using shellac. I will have this paint color linked below. It's just a color black and it was a pre-made paint that I picked up at Ace Hardware for just $9.99. So again, I'll have that linked below, but this is a matte black and I thought this would just look really cool with the whole design of this room. I'm also using a spray gun and I don't know if I've shown you this one in any of my recent tutorials, but we've had this gun for quite a bit. They run from 15 to 60 bucks. I mean, some can be a lot more expensive, but I just hooked this up to our compressor and this is such an awesome tool. It really gets the job done quick. These nightstands took about one and a half coats of paint, so it was really quick, maybe 15 minutes to do both of them total.
To do a top coat, I actually picked up this polycrylic spray paint and I have never tried this before, but I love this stuff. I would definitely recommend it. Just make sure that you shake the can for two minutes before you use it. Otherwise, it's going to start spraying out chunks. So just keep shaking in between sprays and make sure you shake it really well before you get started. Here's just after one coat and it's completely dry, but it looks so good. I have never tried to use spray kind, but it definitely works really well. Better than I thought. All right, now the wall is prepped and ready to paint and we are just using some leftover paint from our back deck. That was the last video that we uploaded. We had a ton of paint left over and I didn't want it to go to waste. I also love the color and I wanted a greenish color in our room. So I'm like, well, let's just go ahead and try this one since we already had it on hand. And I love how this turned out on our wall. Now for this whole design, we wanted a big statement piece on the back wall. And when we would look at pictures of some ideas, we both thought, oh my gosh, this is gonna be so easy, like 30 minutes, we'll just throw it up here on the wall. And this was an all day thing. This took a lot of thinking, a lot of math, because you can't technically just throw boards up without having like perfect measurements and knowing exactly what you're doing. So if you're doing a wall like this, just know it's gonna take a little bit longer than you thought. However, Thomas said, if we had trimmed in the entire wall, like the two sides, cause we left the trim up on the ceiling, you are going to be able to put your board up against the trim and know your angle cuts better, if that makes sense. Thomas was trying to explain that to me before and I was like, I don't know what you're saying. I don't want it trimmed in. And so it made it way harder for him. And I, I wish we would have just trimmed it in on the sides. Like that would have been a really easy thing. Now we did get nine pieces of this trim. The trim that we picked for this was a finished trim and it was one by one and a half. So it's really thin and they were $4 and 50 cents of board and we got nine of them and we only ended up using eight. If I can remember, I think we still have a full board out in the garage. So this cost around 35 to $40 for the whole wall. What Thomas is doing here is he is building a barn door and it is the coolest statement piece. I can't wait for you guys to see this. I'm not doing a full blown tutorial in this video because this video would be like 30 minutes long if we did that. So tomorrow, expect this video to go up. You will get to see step by step exactly how to build this door if you're interested. This is a design we came up with and it is so cool. It's a really cool statement piece. It's not necessarily a door you would have if you needed full privacy. But again, like I said, it's such a cool statement piece and it totally transformed this room. The stain color we chose is honey. And this is actually the same color as the bench we did on our deck. So we've had the stain for a while and we still have tons of it. So it's always good to just use what you have if you like the color. While he was doing the door, I sprayed the other dresser with the same green color we did the back wall. And then I just spray painted the hardware. This is what we're using for now. I do wanna get a different dresser here down the road. But again, for now, I thought this way, the room would really tie in together.
Okay, I just want to run through everything really quickly price-wise so you guys know how we kept this under $300. Now, the paint color we chose for this wall and this dresser were actually leftover paint from when we did the deck. So this didn't cost us anything as far as paint goes. With the wood or the trim pieces, the total of that was $40.50. We also had an entire board left over, so we technically spent around $35 to do this wall. The two nightstands were things we already had. These were thrifted items that I had from a while back. We would already painted them, I think I explained that, and I just wanted them to look a little bit different. So the can of paint we chose was $9.99, and the new hardware we got was around $2 a piece. I'll be sure to have those handles and anything else I possibly can, even the paint color, all of that, linked in the description box below. Right now, these are actually pillows that go on our sofa, so these actually don't go in here. I haven't found pillows yet, but I'm on the hunt for something that looks similar to this. I like the color. So again, these technically are not here to stay. I wish they were, but they need to go back out on the sofa. And then these were just pillow covers I got for $18 for the two of them off Amazon and I used pillows I already had and stuffed them inside. That is the cheapest you will ever find faux leather. They are so expensive, like just to buy a pillow is usually around $50. So go with the faux leather. I will have these also linked in my description box. We already have the curtains. We already have this whole setup right here if you're interested in a tutorial on this fireplace. We have a video for that, so I will have that linked below as well. And just so you know, the mirror I did thrift, and I think I got that for $5, if I can remember right. The lights were something we already had lying around. I was going to hang them under the house, but I realized they were white, so we've just been holding on to them, and I thought it might be fun to have them in our room. Like, I love these kind of lights so much. I've never really seen them inside of a house before, but they're really fun. The barn door was $100. That right there is such a huge statement piece and we have an entire video that will be going up tomorrow on how to build this door in way more detail. This is a design we came up with and I know it's not technically a privacy door, that's not what I wanted. We've never had a door here, there's really no need for one to be right here because this goes to our closet. I just always wanted some kind of barn door but I love the statement piece that this makes. So again, I'll have a whole tutorial on how to make this tomorrow. The hardware was $40 and I will have that link. Technically, if you build this entire door, it would be around $140. That is so much more affordable than going and getting one pre-made. Just the hardware at Lowe's was around $200. So I will have the kind we got from Amazon, and this is the same one we have in two different rooms in our house. And we love this hardware, it works perfectly. There's no need to spend hundreds of dollars when you can spend 40. This dresser right here, I actually have been wanting to replace it because I don't love the dry fit drawers. They're kind of hard to slide in and out. But for now, I was like, well, we have leftover paint still, even after the wall and the deck. So for now, we just use that free paint, and then I got a $4 can of spray paint and spray painted the handles. And then this is what we have going on right here. I just hung some of my hats here on some command strips, nothing fancy. And then I will get a better extension cord. For now, this is all I could find. But my goal is to have it just run down the side right here and then just back behind the TV so we don't see any cords and it'll be a white cord. So it should be a little bit more camouflage than what's going on here. But to be honest, most of the time our door is open anyway, so it's not really a problem. I'll show you guys what this looks like when I open this all the way. Since you can see back here, we just drilled a hole back here and have our cord running down the wall. And that's how we have it plugged in so you can't see. So that's just a nice little trick if you wanna hide your cords. So here it is kind of behind the TV just so you can get a better look at that. That's kind of how it will stay most of the time. Like we really won't have that shut very often but I am just obsessed with it. I love it. To be honest, my husband said this was 10 times easier than figuring out this wall. <laughs> so this was something we thought was gonna be so simple and it ended up being a little bit harder than we both thought it was going to be. But as far as the door goes, if you have the right tools, he really says anybody could do this door. So stay tuned for tomorrow's video if you wanna see more in depth how to do this door. And thanks again for watching, guys. We'll see you in the next video.